Hello everyone, my name is The Great Fez, and uh, this is the first video on my series of the evolution of my Ascent script. Uh, if you've kept up with uh, my previous videos, you can see that I, I work with uh, KOS, which is a mod for Kerbal Space Program here. Um, and I'll be showing you, uh, essentially from the very beginning when I first started to now, how I develop my Ascent script for all my rockets. Um, this is essentially just to give you guys like an insight of, of how I approach the problem. I'm an aerospace engineer by trade, uh, so I have I have a lot I've a lot of technical experience with this stuff. But on top of that, um, I've done a lot of programming on on my own. So uh, I wanted to just give you guys an insight, and essentially it could be used kind of like a tutorial. Um, so I also created this this presentation here to to help me go through it. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go th go over the rules or or the the goal of this ascent script. Uh, it should be a general script. So the first rule is that it shall allow all the sh uh, allow the ship to reach intended orbit with enough fuel to carry out its mission. So um, that translates to the the script must be efficient. But I wanted to make sure it's you know it's understandable what the goal is. Second is the script shall work with all well designed ships. So if a ship is not able to to make it you know physically kinematically then uh, it's out of here um then the third one is it shall re not require further input from the intended orbit and that's just to make sure that this is a a automated script it's not something i have to mess around with every time i could just pop it in to uh, see if my ship will work and then go go back to the drawing board and mess around with the design as opposed to you know individual lines of code every time i want to run it uh, the last one is, is not something I'm, I'm striving for, but I am trying to make sure that it, it is still kind of realistic. I want to show this as a, a test of, of my knowledge that I am applying from the real world onto a game. Uh, although, But the reason why it's optional is because it's a game. It's not real. Uh, so th this will not cover anything beyond the initial ascent to Apogee. Once the Apogee hits, uh, the, the script is going to cut off and then... Um, you can uh, circularize from there. There's lots of other scripts and stuff that can do that. Um, uh, but this is just taking you from launch to Apogee. So the very first thing I ever did was create a script um, that was uh, very simple. It was just step by step. I don't, I'm sure you guys have heard whenever uh, you look for tutorials on how to, you know, get into orbit with KSP. There's a very simple, like, you know. Uh, once you get to X altitude, pitch over uh, a certain amount, you know, 30 degrees at 10 kilometers. Uh, and once you get to 20 kilometers, pitch over to 45, stuff like that. I've seen that quite a few times, so essentially uh, that's the first step of how to do this, right? Um, so I I will be using Git for all this stuff, so just, just an FYI, I, I've been releasing them as versions to, to keep in track. All this is going to talk about is version 1. And then uh, the, the subsequent ones are going to be version 2 and 3 and so on. So this is version 1. Uh, it's very, very crude. And let me pull this up here. Uh, I have these set out to tags. And then I can go through the script here, show you what it does. This top portion, essentially from here up, um, is mainly going to stay the same. Uh, some inputs might be changing in this section here but we're always going to be trying to hit for now at least 100 kilometers um you know we always want to clear the screen uh, i think i've forgotten to update this but you know this is just title stuff and some comments uh the staging works um later in like i think version 1.2 i changed this because this max value is already a function so you, you don't want to be using a function name for a variable so i, I fixed that later on didn't really feel like fixing it here because it, it actually still works. But um, the staging works for asparagus staging, uh, normal like uh, booster staging, or just single stage stages. It all works. I haven't had any issues, so that, none of that's really going to be the focus of this. We're going to be talking about the actual pitch loop here. Um, and, the, and like I said before, it's very, very simple. The, um, Think of this as like someone just introduced to KOS, what they did, and this is literally what I did back in the day. Um, I, I always print stuff out in any programming language I want to debug, so I have these print statements here. And uh, I can actually show you how this script runs here. 
Uh, I'm not gonna show you like the entirety of it, but I can while that's going because it has to reach up to 5,000 feet in it, or meters, and it takes for it. Uh, I could change this around, but I don't really want to mess around with the script. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just really simple, you know, just pitch 15 degrees down every time and I can manually adjust each one of these values to to whatever I, I need it to. I can also adjust every th one of these, but at the end of the day, this is really tedious to deal with, right? I mean, if I want to change all these to 6,000 increments, I have to change them all manually and, you know, add it and do math myself. That's, that's not good. It's not very automatic. Um, so, oh, perfect. Go, yeah. So it just pitches over, and then every 5,000 feet it just pitches over again, and again, and again, and again. And um, you can see how the orbit here is increasing, and so on and so forth. So it's just going to continue to do this until there, until the apoapsis here is about 50, uh, 100 kilometers. Um, so I'm I'm going to go ahead and stop it here because it's it's really very basic what it's doing. What I really want to talk about more is how to improve this uh, function uh, or script uh, to be much more readable. Um, and this, uh, this, these slides that I presented are kind of standalone, so I'm not going to be using them per se, but uh, just to help me keep in track. But um, I also have critiques of each one of the the version versions as I'm going through this. So um, the critique for this one, like I said, is is uh, it's very tedious and manual to change stuff can't really print stuff out on top of that this isn't very realistic right you're not going to have a, a, a rocket going I mean look at any rocket that you've ever watched uh, if you like that kind of stuff look at any rocket launch and you can see how smooth the turn is it you almost forget that it's it's pitching over as it's, as it's going down range but this is a very sharp turn for every single increment it's just it doesn't work it puts a lot of stress on the vehicle it's it, a lot of losses are in, inherent with you know, aerodynamics and, and turning losses is just, it's no good. But it does the job. I mean, it's a game, and you could see it was going up. It wasn't breaking or anything. Uh, the, the next part is version 1.1. .1. This is an improvement of the script. So instead of it being um, inside of just a bunch of statements, I broke it down into a list, uh, or into a, a, a loop is what it's called, uh, if you're not familiar with programming, but this is an until loop to those who are familiar with KOS. Uh, the inputs here are this switch alt. Uh, this value here is the increment. So this switch alt is when the uh, when the ship starts pitching over. And then this is how much uh, it's waiting to pitch over at the next increment. And this is how much it's pitching over. So once it hits zero um, or it's below zero, uh, and zero would be pointed directly at the horizon. It doesn't pitch over anymore. Um, so that's essentially what it does. I'm not going to rerun this because it, it does the exact same thing. It's just much prettier. So it will still follow this this pattern here of going 5,000 meters, pitch down 15 degrees, 10,000, so on and so forth. It will behave just the same. Um, but the problem with this is that it's still very simple, right? We still have the pro the the... The scheme being simple, simple is usually good, but in this case, we don't have enough complexity to, uh, you know, analyze different portions of the rocket. Like, is it going too fast? Is it pitching too fast? None of that is, is we don't have any inputs for that kind of stuff. So it's not very closed loop. It's not very um, powerful. So uh, we need to, to improve upon that. Um, on top of that, we still have this very sharp turn that, you know, it's not very realistic. So... If you look at this, I mean, in my eyes, this is a straight line, right? If you if you discreetly, if like a computer was looking at this with zeros and ones, like, of course, this is going to be a bunch of steps. But if we make each of these steps, you know, infinitely small and infinitely short, uh, eventually you get a straight line, which is, a, which is I guess, a natural progression to this. Um, you, this straight line algorithm is, is much smoother, obviously. It... It starts off at you know straight and then slow pitches over based on altitude as you go down, so it's a much smoother approach. It, it gets rid of that sort of unrealistic um, uh, ability that that the other one has. Um, the two inputs here are the starting out uh, starting altitude, which right now it's set to four 
five thousand in this plot, and then forty thousand here. Um, and these all I use MATLAB, and I'll probably be using MATLAB for a bunch of other stuff to to generate these plots and also to to maybe create some other plots to analyze this stuff. So I, I've also put those in the in the repository so that people can see how I'm generating these functions um, to to visualize. But um, yeah, so so uh, this is just a linear function. Um, let me run it to show you guys how it it has improved. Uh, the other thing that I did, oh here I could probably show you. The other thing I did was I put this print statement inside of the loop, so it, it's updating every single tick, right? Which is good because if you're, you know, waiting for something to happen inside of this function, um, in the previous one I, it would it would not work, right? It, it would break some instance here, um, or I'm sorry, not that it wouldn't work, but it, it would not be very clear because you couldn't have, you know, values being printed out constantly. Um, so let me show you how that this is now a prettier functionality. Here we go. About to start pitching over. Uh, so now we have 75 here. Oh no no wait mistake. That's embarrassing. I forgot to change this to version two. And just for kicks. Oh here we go. Now I'm looking at the correct code. <laughs> this is something I did now. Uh, is that this print statement and I also made this even more simple or, or easier to follow uh, this might be a little bit too long to follow but it's just a simple line right uh, starting point is 90 degrees and the final point is zero uh, and then it starts here and ends here and then it just makes a line between the two points that's all it does here um, let me change it for just a second to 1000 just because it'll run much nicer and faster. I don't have to sit here and wait until it hits 5,000 meters. Um, besides that, everything else is the same, right? We're still using the same rocket, um, same planet, same whatever, right? So, here we go. Nice. Now we have a pitch that is decreasing based on altitude and it's a like very smooth turning you can see the, the ship just pitching over slightly this is more of like what you would see uh, in real life uh, the ship is uh, you know not under a lot of stress you can see that there's a there is an angle of attack that it's following here um, uh, which you know induces a, some drag uh, induces some losses from the lifting forces um, on top of that, you'll have turning losses from your velocity vector, uh, but uh, compared to you know the snapping or or very sharp uh, steps that it was taking before, this is a much nicer, uh, uh, smoother turn. Uh, if you ever you know done any sort of car racing, you know that smooth is good, and and that that applies here as well. Um, so I'll let this run through um, the until it gets to the apogee, or at least when it cuts off for the app. But um, something else I wanted to, to point out um, is this again is simple, right? We're we're looking for something that is robust. We're looking for something that is efficient. Uh, we don't really have any way to measure any of that, right? It's just doing following still a, set, a simple set of instructions. Just follow this pitch maneuver. Uh, until you've reached your altitude. It's not very complex. Uh, if I were to change, you know, the engine, change that over there, I have no guarantee that it would still function the same way. Um, I have no guarantee that that the, the ship isn't going to blow up. I have no guarantee that it's not going to overheat. None of that, right? Um, and on top of that, like, even even right now with the current parameters that I have set, the ship is plowing through the atmosphere it is getting hot i think at some point here it's probably going to uh, start indicating that the the heat generation is getting too high um even though we have like a nice smooth transition to the orbit it's it's possible we might not even get to orbit but i kind of want to wait and see uh what this takes us to 
hopefully yeah it looks like we, we will be okay but um, once this finishes touch on with another point of how this is not very efficient see right here it's already getting really hot that's you don't really want that although sometimes um, you can sacrifice the speed here and, and heating to uh, increase efficiency I, I'm not looking into that I'm looking for safe um, safe you know uh, ascent uh, I don't really want to have any risk of exploding I want to just turn it on and walk away and come back and it'll be in orbit um, uh, the efficiency part this is something that's gonna have to be taken into account well first off me <laughs> uh, the script ended so it's not in control anymore um, so let me first put it in in or in prograde so it's at least you know aerodynamic um, but you could see we've already lost what is it 300 3,000 uh, meters of altitude from our apogee like that that's not good we we should probably have some sort of logic in here to maintain this to to be more accurate uh, but because that's one of our thing our our criteria right we want to put it in the intended orbit and right now it's technically not it, uh, we have to you know create another burn after we circularize to, to upgrade to to push this apogee up to 100 kilometers uh, we have to have some other logic in here to uh, make sure that it's safe or to push it higher or something, right? This isn't what we want. Um, we On top of that, after it ended, did you notice how it was spinning around? That's not good. We, we want to maintain this aerodynamic forward-facing shape so that we can um, minimize this loss because there's always going to be loss here, right? You, you can't just coast through um, atmosphere and not have any losses, but if you can get through it fast enough or through through the atmosphere that's really thin um, then it will minimize it right so those are the kind of things that we're going to be looking at in the next version uh, and on top of that um, I want to touch base that um, it's going to look like a gravity turn right um, this is uh, that was a little preview there sorry uh, something that uh, this, this is a little bit of semantics, but just to make sure that everybody's clear on what we're talking about. Um, what I've been doing is looking at my ascent profile, right? Uh, your ascent algorithm, ascent, ascent uh, program, whatever you want to call it. But that's that's what the general term is called. A lot of people call these gravity turns, uh, but a gravity turn is a very specific kind of optimization scheme. Um, you use it you can use it to optimize stuff and you can also use it to actually run you know um, a, a ascent program and have the the ship follow a gravity turn procedure but um, I'll, I'll be touching base on on what my analysis on on how I I looked through it and and pulled some stuff that I learned from gravity turns out and didn't keep some of the other stuff uh, so I'll I'll end it there um, uh, this will be my first video. I'll finish up with version 2 and then uh, uh, submit the next video sometime in the future. I don't want to give myself any time because uh, I want to make sure I do it correctly. I don't want to rush anything. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave links to the, um, the slideshow presentation. The uh, repository is on GitHub here. Um, uh, all, all my releases and stuff will be here. Uh, you can keep track of, you can, you know, poll if you have any suggestions for improvements and stuff. Go ahead and, and give me some comments. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.